Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of the Late Night Vision Show. This is episode 128, and this is a very, very special episode that only comes around once a year because this week uh, and the day that this podcast is released is Mr. Jason Robertson's birthday. So happy birthday, buddy. Another year, well, you've made a, that, another yeah. complete full trip around the sun. So, I, I tell you what, you know what, that's a surprise to me because to be honest with you, uh, I did not know that this was coming out on my birthday, and I didn't even really think about this was my birthday uh, week. That was so uh, I've been trying to forget about it. You know, and when you're a kid, it's a lot of fun. When you get to be our age, you're like, yeah. you start arguing. How old are we really? You're asking your wife, yeah. am I this old or that old? So, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I am, I am uh, glad to make it one more year. That's right. Well, Jason is the owner of Outdoor Legacy. Uh where you can purchase all your night vision and thermal optics. So if you're interested in something, the best Christmas gift or Christmas gift, the best birthday gift or Christmas gift that you could give Jason is head on over and buy a night vision scope or a thermal right. optic from him. You can purchase it. Uh, give him a call at 877-350-1818. You can find all the stuff on the website, outdoorlegacygear.com. Uh, but happy birthday, buddy. I'm, Thank uh, you I know very that you much. and I are going to be, spending some time together soon to celebrate and I look forward to it. So yeah, I'm yeah. ready. I, I'm excited. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's good. And we, we normally try to do something on some yeah. birthdays and stuff and get together. So we'll, we'll get something planned and, and I'm excited. I'm sure normally it's just an excuse for our wives to get together and get shopping. I mean, that's really it what it is. And then Hans and I normally just end up working, but uh, it's, you know, <laughs> you whatever. Some video They're, or something, working on it, something. Yeah. Exactly. That, that's exactly right. But anyway, nope, another great week. And we got another good show, too. We do. So we have the full review of the uh, Bearing Optics Hogster 25 millimeter. So two weeks ago, we did the full review of the, 30, the Hogster R 35 millimeter. This is the Hogster R 25 millimeter. And if you are looking to find out what the differences are, we're going to get into that. We're also, um, I want you to stay, uh, make sure you stay tuned towards the end of this episode also, because we're going to be talking about um, how the Hulkster R25 millimeter relates to the, if you remember, uh, the now discontinued FLIR Thermosite Pro PTS 233. If you remember that, which was discontinued, when was that? year ago almost a year uh, ago. Jan january of 2020 yeah. so yeah about yeah. All, 10 months ago so yeah so how how that's this scope the 25 millimeter hogster relates to that as all and also the pulsar core uh, rx q 30 v which a lot of you know and we've discussed many times on this show i feel like i'm forgetting to say something and maybe the the light will click on right now but uh before I, we uh before i think of it i'll interrupt you if i do Okay. Um, but I know that Jason's going to come up here with the uh, with the specs. We're going to talk about uh, the specs of this unit, functionality. We're going to do a walk around, buttons, all the the different layout, um, ID of course, ID range, likes and dislikes. We're going to have that Pulsar Core uh, FLIR PTS two three three discussion, and then we're going to give our overall opinion. So stay tuned okay. for all that good stuff. So I don't know of anything you're forgetting. So if you oh, think I, of it now, oh, I know what I gosh, now I, I remember. It. Okay, it, it relates it? to your birthday, y'all. If y'all are watching on YouTube, please get in the comment section. Wish Jason a birthday, happy birthday in the comment section of this video. If you're on social media, uh, post something uh, on Instagram oh or gosh. Facebook and and tag oh, Jason for his right, birthday. Right. I know That's, I'll be making some posts. I can't. Uh, so oh let's boy. let's show let's show Jason how much we love him. How much this man works really really hard. Uh, he's out answering everybody's questions, even uh, even when he's got other things he's got to get done. He's still working. He was in the office till seven o'clock tonight. So y'all go wish him happy birthday. But I'll let you get into the specs now. Go on okay. Ahead. Well, well, thank you very much. I do appreciate <laughs> it, and yeah. I will uh, include my address below for where you can send checks, gifts. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Thank you very, yeah. very much. I I do appreciate it, and uh, I know somebody's going to ask how old I am. And I'm just going to say it's uh, over 41 and under 45. So somewhere in there. Yeah. And, we and I would tell same, you. We're now the same age. So I am uh, yeah. a little bit older than Jason. Uh, he's yeah. finally caught up with me. I would so. say this. If uh, I would tell you exactly what that age is, but I'm not exactly sure. It's between one <laughs> and two not. years. So that's why I'm not telling you. So he's not. Uh, yeah. He's not. I'll, 
I'm, I don't know, but I, it's, it's real, <laughs> somewhere in between there. Okay, so let me talk to you a little bit about this scope. Uh, as Hans said, it is the Bearing Optics Hogster R 25 millimeter, 1.4 power base magnification. Uh, it is $2,295, so $2,295, a bargain of a scope. And when we get done tonight, uh, I think you're going to uh, see why we are excited about it uh, to have something down here in this price range of this kind of quality. So I'm going to go over the specs. Uh, as I said, $2,295 is the price tag, a 1.4 power base optical magnification, but it does have digital zoom going up to 5.6 power. That's the max, uh, you know, zoom on it. And if you're new to thermal, one thing to remember is that you're not going to want to go up to that 5.6 power and have, you know, a really good usable image. You're really going to only probably want to zoom it up one time to that, say, 2.8 power. That's a very usable uh, ID. You know, you can still ID the animal, see what it is. You get much above that, it's going to get really, really grainy on you. So 1.4 uh, again, bumping it up one time to 2.8 would still be usable. It's got a 384 by 288 thermal sensor in it. It's at 17 microns with a 50 hertz refresh rate. I had a guy tell me the other day, he said, I listened to all your specs. Sounded really great. He said, I had no earthly idea what you were saying, but you were excited about it. So I figured it must be good. So uh, 384 by 288, 17 microns, 50 hertz. If you don't know what that means, it means it's good. It's good for the money. All right. Mm -hmm. Those are those are good things. Uh, does have a 25 millimeter objective lens. And this is the most important thing about that lens. I don't care. If it's 15 millimeters or it's 50 millimeters, the big deal is that it is focusable. Mm. That is something we've never seen in a thermal scope in this price range. Uh, I don't know of any of the major brands that we talk about on this show. Um, gosh, I'm just thinking back. I'm sure, sure somebody's going to correct me, but I know <laughs> Pulsar has never had one. A FLIR is gone, but I don't think they ever had one. Um, I don't know anybody that had a focusable objective for this price range. Focusable is yeah. a big deal. It means you get a better, sharper, crisper image, uh, and it costs more to put it in there. So it's a really nice feature. Uh, one thing I've been asked a lot is what is the field of view? Some people hear this, you know, 25 millimeters. That sounds really narrow when you're coming from a daytime scope and you say, oh man, it must have a narrow field of view incorrect it's got a super wide field of view at about 80 foot now bearing doesn't pull, uh, publish the uh, field of view in feet and so uh, i actually went out with my lovely wife my assistant <laughs> with a hundred foot tape <laughs> and a laser rangefinder and said here hook hook one into the tape to this uh, corner post on this wood you know, wood post on this barbed wire fence and walk that way so 80 foot is what we got on that so just, just your wife yeah, puts up with my, a lot she does but she's uh you know she's she's thankful to, to you she's know, a good sport. anything she can do to help that's right yeah. it takes two cr123a batteries uh, you can also use a usb external battery pack there is a uh, cable that comes in the box with the scope that you can plug in that will go into any standard external USB battery pack on the two CR123A lithium disposable batteries. Uh, you're going to be looking at about four hours of battery life, give or take there. Also, this unit does have external video recording. What that means is uh, there's no video recording inside the scope. You have to buy an additional um, MDVR, mini digital video recorder, that you hook up with a cable, uh, you know, to the scope. Now, we have those available, uh, but with a cable that you're going to need, a custom cable and the MDVR, you're looking at about $240, $250. So if video recording is very important to you, it is possible, but it's going to come at a little bit of an upgraded price, which is pretty standard for most optics in this price range. It also has a picture-in-picture -picture function. It's got four color palettes, four reticles, and four colors on those reticles so you can change them from the four different colors also comes this is another little upgrade that i'll really like on this unit with a 
pre-attached quick detach mount. Now, this is something Hans and I talked about on our review of the big brother to this scope, which is the Bearing Optics uh, Hogster 35 millimeter two power base magnification. That scope is 2675. And we talked about this mount. Uh, we'll briefly uh, discuss that just a little bit here. It is a quick detach mount. Hans and I have tested it. We have had no issues whatsoever using it uh, with taking the scope off and putting it back on. Uh, it's held zero. Uh, I tested this myself again on Saturday. I was zero in one of these scopes. And I mean, I know Hans and I have already used them, uh, but we just, I wanted to see it again. So I zeroed the yeah. scope, took it off, turned the scope off, you know, put it back on, turned it on and boom, it's, it's dead on. It was, uh, you know, touching the other bullet hole and trust me, I'm not that good of a shot. So it well, was and, and definitely I've, on. Yeah. I've shot this, uh, scope on a six, five Grindle and also an AR 10 308 pistol. So everybody mm -hmm. knows how hard those 308 pistols kick. And I've tested it on both those different rifles and it's held zero. Uh, the, the scopes, um, is good on there. You won't, yep. I don't think you're going to need anything else. Yep. I, I know there are some, you know, aftermarket mounts available. And if that's just something you think you've got to have, I completely understand it. Uh, but you're going to be looking at spending a couple hundred dollars plus there to, to get that. But we've tested these. We see no issue with it at all. Now, I did mention the Bearing Optics Hogster 35 millimeter two power mm -hmm. base magnification. We reviewed that about what, two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. I think yep. so. Two that's weeks ago. Uh, episode. So, What's this one? 128. So on episode 126 was the Hulkster R35 millimeter review. Yeah. So if you're interested in that scope, again, it's 2675. Go check check out episode 126. Is that right, Hans? That's, yeah. 126. Okay. All right. Good. <laughs> and so uh, check that out. But I want to do a quick comparison between these two scopes. Uh, if you put them side by side, they look nearly identical. The only thing you're really going to notice is the lens cap that is on this uh, 25 millimeter unit is a rubber lens cap that fits over the, the lens. You just literally, you know, push it on and it's tethered by a little piece of wire. Uh, just fine. Works great. The 35 millimeter has a rigid plastic uh, hinged cap. So you flip that hinge all the way open and you can flip it back. That's the only difference you're really going to see uh, on the exterior. Uh, the function, the finish, all, all that is basically the same. Uh, again, if you, if you took, if you uh, just didn't see the, the objective lens, you wouldn't know the difference in the scopes. Right. Uh, right. They function basically the same. Uh, all the menus and everything seem to be, generally uh, mm -hmm. exactly alike. Uh, again, I mentioned an 80 foot field of view on this 1.4 power 25 millimeter we're reviewing today. On the 35 millimeter, it is a 58 foot field of view, which is still really wide. And that's mm -hmm. on the two power. And so otherwise, very, very similar scopes. If you're looking for a little more magnification, uh, then I would jump up to the 35 millimeter. And mm -hmm. we will talk a little more here later on about, you know, who this scope is good for. And so we'll kind of tell you what we think yeah. is reasonable on, on this, this scope here. So taking a look around the scope and, and talking about the function, if you remember, if you did watch the 35 millimeter Hulkster review, it, this thing looks almost identical, but just a smaller optical lens version. But man, this thing is tiny. I mean, if you wrap your hand around it, you feel like the scope disappears in your hand. It's so small. And that's a great thing. That's a positive. There's a lot of people that call about this that say, man, I want a buddy scope, but with this buddy scope, I want to use it as a monocular while it's not being used. So this thing is so small that you can use it as a monocular uh, out in the field. And then if you have a buddy tag along, you know, on a hunt with you, you can throw this thing on a rifle and they can enjoy their hunt just as much as you and both of you hunt with thermal. So that's that's a huge advantage with these Hawksters is the size uh, and how small it is. But uh, like Jason said, it's got this one has this kind of rubber eye cap uh, or uh, objective lens cover, which is a little bit different than the other Hawkster 35 millimeter. Uh, but the buttons are the same. It's got three buttons on top. Now it's only got three buttons, so 
these, you know, there's a lot of different changes that you can make in the menus and a lot of different setup uh, items that you can do. So there are multiple functions that happen and can occur with uh, the same button. So it's a, you know, either a series of short presses or long presses that will either uh, turn the scope on and off, uh, get you to the menu, uh, zoom in, zoom out, uh, recalibrate the screen. I mean, there, there's, so the, the buttons do different things, but um, you know, getting into the menu, you're going to long press uh, on this middle button here. uh, And from there, it it takes you into everywhere else, but you've got your uh, 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 eye diopter, focus here on the front, your eyepiece to after focus on the end. You've got your objective lens focus right here. Uh, rubber eye cap, uh, like Jason says, got a, a one piece QD throw lever mount right here. That works very well. It's got your uh, plug on the side, which is just a, I don't know what they call it. What is this? A USB-C? Yeah. Just, I don't know which one of the USB. There's it, too it, many it's, USBs. It's a very now, common but, one, but it comes with yeah. a, a set of cables in the, in the bag with it. And uh, that's what um, you can use to set up an external battery pack. Or if you want to set this up to record video uh, with an MDVR, you can do so as well. And that's where that goes. I think that's pretty did – I, did I miss anything? That's I, your... you, you didn't, but I, I did. I forgot one important thing. Um, so I'm going to just jump in here. The standard warranty for a thermal scope in this industry mm-hmm. is three years – and Bearing Optics is offering a four-year yeah. warranty on all their thermals, and that's a that's, big deal. Yeah. I mean, that's that's, that's a very a, big deal. Yeah, a, very an big extra deal. a full year going from three to four is big. So, uh, yeah, you're you're looking at a four four-year warranty. And so, uh, somebody asked me just real quick where Bearing, you know, where are they located, and their home offices are in North Texas. I'm not mm-hmm. exactly sure you know, yeah. where, where all they do business out of, but I know that where, yeah. where we're dealing with is in North Texas. So, yeah, North Texas. So let's talk about, um, the overall image and ID range. I'll get into it. I'll touch into it first and I'll let you jump into it as well. This, just like the Hulkster R35 millimeter, you know, this is a little bit less magnification, but man, it has a very, very good picture image, especially for the price of almost $2,300. I'm going to say realistic um, ID range is going to be about 250 yards, which, I mean, is going to be something I think a lot of people out there uh, are going to be able to use to go out and have fun with. No matter what you're hunting, um, if $2,300 or $2,500 is your max price range, uh, you know, something like this for $2,300, you can ID at 250 yards. You know, as far as safely taking a shot with a scope like this, I mean, I wouldn't think nothing about it to throw out a 150, 200 yard shot if I knew there was nothing, nothing behind it. But sometimes I throw out shots I shouldn't throw out. So maybe y'all shouldn't. I, yeah. <laughs> but, let's okay. Let me get a hold of it. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. yeah. No, but I, I would, you know, I'd I feel comfortable so. taking a hundred, 150 yard I, shot. I think that, yes, I think that a, I will say this. I think that the 175 to 200 yard shots need to be the rarity. Uh, just because I think you're really going to be doing that at about 2.8 power. And that's, that's not what the scope probably made for I mean, It's not yeah. ideal, but yeah, I don't see any reason if you've got a hog or something out there that, you know, for a fact, what it is, you've got that positive well, ID and you can take the shot. I think 150 to 200 yards max is, is very reasonable. If you're new to thermal hunting, night vision hunting, a lot of you out there may say, well, 200 yards, that's not a very long shot. Well, I mean, we say this all the time, Jason, and people are going to get tired of hearing it, but 200-yard shot with a thermal scope is a pretty long shot. It's that's not a a, It's shot. not the norm. And, uh, you know, most of the shots that uh, a lot of the people in the southern part of the United States are taking are generally under 100 yards. Or under so, 75, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's under 75. So, you know, this is going to be something that's going to be – uh, a good ID range and shooting, shooting range scopes for the vast majority of the people out there that are looking for a thermal scope. So yeah. uh, I'd feel a hundred percent confident saying that, you know, you ID at 250 yards, safely taking a shot, you know, close to 200 yards, 150, I, 200 I, yards. I agree fine. with that. I would say one thing though, I would say if you're looking and you're saying, Hey, most of my shots, maybe, I, maybe you're coyote hunting. Uh-huh. You say most of my shots are going to be over a hundred yards. This is not the scope to buy. 
I mean, I believe when, if you, unless you've only got $2,300 and then this is well, just good for you. <laughs> if, if, if you say that, and I would say, uh, not a good salesman here, but, but put your money in a coffee can, bury it and save up a few hundred more wow, and get man. something with some more magnification. We're but, going into no, hunting if, season. We need a scope. I know. We, we need a scope, need a scope today. yesterday. <laughs> uh, I, I honestly believe that the ideal shooting distance for this scope is going to be, I mean, just the, just literally in the wheelhouse of this scope is going to be that 30 to 75 yard range. I think that's where you're, once you get above that, mm -hmm. I think you're going to have to zoom up and yep. that's fine. You're zoomed up. I think that the 75 to that 125, 150 is still yep. very doable, but I, it, it really, and I mean this seriously, if you know, I'm going to be shooting at 100, 150 yards all the time. It's just, you, you need to save up and buy a scope yeah. with a little more magnification. But if you're going to be doing a lot of close range hunting, uh, varmints, coons, uh, again, if you get coyotes, fox, things in close enough, uh, hogs, this is a heck of a scope for a hog oh, yeah. scope. Oh, I mean, yeah. this is, this is uh, excellent. And, and again, if somebody's listening to this and they go, man, 1.4 power, that's nothing. Well, again, Hans mentioned this, and we'll kind of get around to these in a little bit, but the, the FLIR PTS-233 was 1.5 power. Uh, the Pulsar Core RXQ-30V is 1.6 power. Uh, you can't tell the difference in 1.4 and 1.6 unless you put them side by side, which I've done. Yeah, so and, so, so and, we're and, uh, talking, yeah, those are super popular scopes. Right, and, and a sign of the times and what a lot of people are calling and asking about because of the chaos that it's been going on for the last several months, they want a thermal scope for property protection and home protection. And, um, I think this is, you know, if I was looking for something for property protection, uh, I would definitely go for this one because of the low magnification and how small of a unit it is when you put it on the rifle. So, uh, for all of y'all out there, that are just want to be able to see around your property, make sure, uh, everything is, uh, okay. Uh, also, I, I got a buddy that runs a lot of cattle. He said, man, I can just, step out my back porch and check out the cows with this thing, make sure everything's okay. And you know, you got, don't have any uh, predators going after calves or anything like that. So, I mean, there's a lot of different uses for thermals and something like this, that's fairly inexpensive, which I know $2,300 is not cheap, but compared to a lot of thermals out there, it is inexpensive, but there's a lot of other uses for thermals that we've talked about you and I, Jason, on this show that uh, people are using these things for. This is a good. We got, we, we get in trouble every time we say budget scope, because <laughs> we do. You, but this is a, a this is a budget thermal scope, and uh, so if you're looking for other ways and uses to use thermal, um, this is a good good option to look at. Yeah, I mean a nice wide field of view. Uh, it, it's it, yeah, really really good optic. Um, I'm going to tell you. Image quality is something we can't talk enough about on this optic. Uh, mm -hmm. If you heard us again, we're going to refer back to episode 126 where the, the Hogster 35, this unit has the same image quality. It's just mm -hmm. less magnification. I used right. them side by side with one on one eye and one on the other holding them. I yeah. messed around with them for multiple nights like that. They have the same image quality. You, you, it is just the difference in magnification. And again, I just kind of speak to this because a lot of times daytime hunters are big on objective lens size and they believe that, oh, if I get a bigger objective, I'm automatically getting better image quality. That does not always hold true uh, in thermal world. It's very, very different. So yeah. n no, no increase in image quality, just going a little higher magnification going to that unit. So uh, really, I, I have never... And I can say this with all certainty. I've never seen a scope on the market for anywhere near this price with this kind of image quality. I yeah, mean, I it is really, really sharp, crisp, and clear. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it, it is definitely a step above anything else that we've ever seen image quality-wise in this mm -hmm. price range. I yeah. definitely agree with that. The detail that you see, uh, especially in that 30 to 75 yards range, uh, is really good. I mean, it's really crisp, um, makes it a fun experience to hunt with. And and uh, if you're showing your buddy thermal for the first time and they see through this scope, 
they're going to definitely want to get yeah. one. I can promise you that because I've, I, I've, that's happened. I've, I've sold several of these just from showing it to buddies of mine. So, um, I think, you know, you kind of hinted on who you thought that this might be good for, yeah. you know, somebody in that 30 to 75 yards, you know, predominantly hunting in those ranges, hog or coyote hunters. Uh, and I would agree with that as well. I mean, whether you're, uh, whether you're hog or coyote hunting, but your shots are primarily within those ranges. Uh, I think that this is a great option. And if, if uh, you need something that you can see out a little bit further away, you've got another great option with the, the Hawkster 35 millimeter at, um, you know, $2,675 right at $2,700. Exactly. I, I, yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I think this is an overlooked optic though. I know that a lot mm-hmm. of people are jumping up to that, you know, Hogster 35, the, the $2,700 unit, which is, it's a great unit. We love it too. But, uh, you know, I think that, uh, this unit, it's what, what, 23, so $375 less expensive. That's over 10% of the cost, uh, well over 10% of the cost. Uh, and doing some math. Yeah. Well over that, probably close to 15%. So I don't think you can just say, Oh, well, I'll just get that one. I mean, this is, Mm-hmm. Uh, a, a heck of a scope for the money. And um, yeah, I'm very, very impressed with it. Now, uh, I want to talk a little bit. I think we need to get into what we like and what we dislike about it. I yeah. think there's a, there's a lot to like, uh, but l- I always like to get the dislikes out of the way. What what would you say? Is, is there anything about it you don't like? What is it? You know, the only dislike, and I know you're probably going to say the same thing, and it was the same um thing that we disliked about the Hulkster R35 millimeter is the menu. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the, the menu is not uh, the best. Um, it's usable, but it's not the best. It's not, not very intuitive. Um, kind of cumbersome at times to get in. I, I find myself messing up and hitting the wrong sequence of buttons. Uh, often when I'm trying to change reticles or color options, I think the good thing about it, though, you do get used to the menu. It is it takes a little bit of a learning curve. But once you get that menu set for the first time and you got everything the way you like it, after that, you rarely ever have to mess with it again. Yeah. So yeah, I, t- I tell much. buddies all the time, this is a turn-on, shoot, turn-off scope. I mean, there's it is. no bells and whistles, but it's for somebody that just wants to turn on a scope and shoot a hog or a coyote. Uh, I agree with that. I, I think that, and it's, it's, I would say this, if I get really specific, it's not just the fact that the menu is a little confusing, a little cumbersome. It's the way that you interact with that menu with the buttons. And if there's one thing I would change about this unit, uh, I would absolutely put more than three total buttons on it. Uh, an average scope will have four to five buttons to control it, including the power button. And this unit has three, including the power button. So what that causes is not only do, does each button have multiple functions, which to be honest, even on the scopes that have four and five buttons, the buttons still have two functions, but these sometimes to do some of the more advanced things, you've got to hit two buttons at one time. And so, to be honest, um, what I found is there's really nothing that I'm going to do that I need to do that. I mean, it's yeah. like you said, once I get it set up yeah. and I get it zeroed, the next thing I'm just doing is maybe zooming in, zooming out. Yeah. What else is there to do? I've pretty much set my color palette. I've set my brightness contrast. Yeah. So I don't find myself doing much, and it's very easy to do the simple stuff. I mean, once yeah. you use it for, you know, 30 minutes, you sit there and play with it in your living room, you're going to understand exactly how to, again, uh, zoom in, zoom out, change brightness, those sort of things, color palettes, reticles, all that is really easy to get to. So uh, that that is one thing I'd say I dislike. Um, one thing I want to mention that uh, I don't personally dislike, but I've had some people that ask me, like, oh, is this a bad thing? And that is does, that it uses the CR123A lithium batteries. And, you know, for this kind of price range, that's what we expect is it to have those kind of batteries. And to be honest, um, it's weird because, you know, that's what all the scopes used to take. And then they've kind of gotten away from that. We've got a lot of these internal batteries and rechargeable batteries. And a lot of guys look at these batteries and they go, man, they're just so expensive. Well, here's the thing. If you buy the, if you buy good batteries, 
and you buy them right, you buy them online, you buy them in bulk, you can get Energizer batteries, CR123A lithiums, all the way down for like a buck 30, buck 40 a piece. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about being able to run this scope for well under a dollar an hour. That's cheap. You know, and these rechargeable batteries, a lot of these things, you know, different brands are for a hundred bucks. So I think the CR123As are great. One thing I do want to mention here, and I'm kind of getting off the likes and dislikes, is a lot of guys are asking, you know, can you use rechargeable batteries? And short answer, yes. But the long answer is you need to be a little careful because a lot of these rechargeable CR123As are junk and they don't mm -hmm. last long. And yeah. before you know it, you've spent all this money buying these batteries, getting it all set up. You're recharging them. You got to have multiple sets when you could have been cheaper just to buy disposable lithium. So anyway, yeah. Yeah. I, it's not really a dislike of mine. I, I, I like, uh, and the other thing is I will say that I do like that. It's just two batteries. That's, you know, Easy mm -hmm. to slip, you know, in and out. The battery cap's good, but dislikes. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I don't like the lens cap as much as I like that rigid flip lens cap. Um, yeah. And I'm sure this was a way to probably cut a little bit of a corner on price. It's probably cheaper to put this tethered rubber lens cap, mm -hmm. but it's fine. It works okay. Does the job. Um, can you think of anything else you don't like? I'm digging here. Looking no, for anything. No, I no, I think we can, uh, I think we oh, hit them all. I, I want to hit one more. I'm going to hit one more dislike. This is something that we did talk about uh, on the other unit. I want to bring it up on this one. And that is that when you zoom up using your digital zoom, and again, I don't care what thermal scope you own, uh, when you zoom up, you're going to lose half your image quality. It's just the way that thermals work. You lose half your resolution, thus you lose half your image quality. On this unit, it's not so much that you just are losing half that image quality. It's, it's that I feel on both of the Hulkster 25 and 35, the, the image gets more pixelated than normal. So mm -hmm. when you're looking at that animal, and let's say you're looking at a hog at, at 100 yards, when you zoom up, you seem to see more. It's kind of, I don't know how to explain it. It's rougher around the edges. You kind of see those individual pixels. I, I don't really like it. It's not the end of the world. I can still absolutely identify the fact that it's a hog, mm -hmm. but I just think when you zoom up, it's not quite as good as some other scopes are. But again, um, you know, for the money, I think that's a kind of a minor detail and it doesn't really affect you yeah. in any major way. So there's my yeah. dislikes and I think I'm trying pretty hard. You're digging, you're digging, but that's I'm okay. Digging. That's why you're here. So that's likes, right. I mean, first and foremost, uh, Great, great picture image. That's the most important thing. It definitely does pass the test in that regard. Very, Ooh, very good yeah. picture image. Focusable objective lens. Um, a That's good a big Q one. That's a big one. Good, uh, good QD locking lever, or not a locking lever, but it's kind of a locking lever, but not. Yeah, not, not a lock. It's just a lever, but it's not a locker. But, yeah, it doesn't lock. But uh, the good mount that comes with it. So, uh, yep. you know, if you want to replace mount, you, you can, but you don't need to works well, uh, solid scope. I mean, meaning that I've shot this on big caliber rifles. It takes the uh, recoil, doesn't blow pixels, uh, again on a 308 pistol. And I mean, solid scope, well built, well designed, small, lightweight can be used as a monocular, uh, it can be used as a buddy scope, could be used as a main scope. Um, man, there's just I, the, the list can go on yeah, and on compared I, to what the uh, what the negatives are. I agree. I don't think again, I don't think I know. We haven't seen a, a full featured scope like this uh, for this kind of price before. So I'm going to hit the, the things that, that I've got. And it's basically your your list. But big deal is image quality uh, to me. Big deal is it also has picture in picture. You do have the different color crosshairs, the different yep. color palettes. You can sight in on multiple rifles. Uh, the, the Again, I think the battery pack system is great. I have the option of any USB external battery pack. So a $30 Walmart battery pack is going to run this thing all night long. I mean, that's a nice option to, to have. You don't have to buy anything proprietary. Say the word right. Uh, the QD mount. Um, again, you, you just touched something there that I think is a big deal is the fact that you can use it as a handheld. I have never been 
a big proponent. Man, I cannot talk tonight. A big proponent of buying, I am getting old, (laughs) of buying a a thermal scope to use as a handheld. I've always told people, look, I understand you can do it. Uh, It's not ideal, but ergonomically, they're not really made for that. And I've just had several reasons where I'm like, you know, buy, if you're going to use it as a handheld most of the time, buy the handheld. I still hold to that. But I will tell you that having had multiple units of these these uh, Hogsters between their three units, a 25mm, 35mm, and Super Hogster, which is something we'll be reviewing in a few weeks, uh, having had several of these units all at once, I can only have one on a rifle at a time, and when I want to compare them side by side, I'll take them off and hold them in my hands. Yeah. These things work really, really well as a handheld monocular. And I had a guy the other day, that was looking for a handheld and he had a certain criteria that we had both kind of, you know, talked about a scenario, figured out what was going to work best. And we couldn't find a monocular with the image quality that he needed with the magnification and just, you know, this, this list of like, this is our, our wish list what we want. And I said, you know what? there's the pairing optics hogster 25 millimeter and i was like it's right in that price range actually a little bit less than some of what we've been talking about and you know before we were done he was like oh my goodness you're exactly right and he was like i've heard great things about that image quality so i definitely think you you could use it as a a monocular as well no No doubt doubt. so i want to go into one more quick thing before we wrap this up um you know, we've talked about how much we do like this. I believe that this scope is going to be the replacement scope for the FLIR Thermosite Pro PTS-233. I know there's some guys listening to this and go, I don't even know what that is. Good, don't worry about it. But for all of you who, you know, have got a buddy that's got one of those and you're thinking, man, it'd be nice to have something in that price range. Uh, you know, now the FLIR's gone out of the thermal market for hunters. I don't have that choice. This is the replacement, and it's way better image quality. Uh, mm-hmm. I think we all know that the Pulsar Core RXQ30V 1899, uh, that optic uh, is going on four years. It was introduced in January of 2017. So I can sure I'm right. Yeah, it will. Mm-hmm. All of 17, 18, 19. Yeah, we're fixing to come up on four full years on that scope. Uh, I don't think it's going to be here forever. I think we all know that. I think the writing's on the wall with that unit. It's been in low supply all year. And I uh, don't know what Pulsar is going to do. But if they don't replace that unit, then there's going to be, again, this this hole of people that are going from that scope. You know, they, they're, again, buddies have had that. They're going to be looking for something. Uh, so if that scope eventually is not around, I think this is the replacement. And yes, I understand it's more money. You're, you're looking at, at a few hundred dollars more. But I think with the focusable objective, the great image quality, the option for external video recording. I don't think you can go wrong. I think it's a no brainer and it is a heck of a scope. And again, I want to bring this up one more time. I think a mistake that a lot of guys are making is saying, Oh, well, it's only that extra three, $400 to go up to the 35 millimeter. But if you don't need that, don't spend that extra money and go to it. This and there's there's also a lot of guys because I, I talk to so many people every day that let's say they were thinking about uh, the two three three the FLIR PTS two three three. Well, it's twenty two hundred dollars, and or was and mm-hmm. you say, man, this one's twenty three hundred dollars. So I got to spend another hundred dollars more. Okay, you know I talked my wife into this. Well, then they go, but. That 35 millimeter is 2675. It's only $375 more. So they start talking themselves into it and they go, okay, yeah, I'm just going to do it. And, and then when they hang up, they think to themselves, man, I started this out wanting to spend, you know, $2,000. Then I got to 22. Then I got to 23. Now I'm at 27. And they go, I'm just not going to buy anything. That's a mistake. I mean, yeah. c- because you've just kept talking yourself, you're nickel and diming yourself till you nickel and dime yourself out of the whole equation. Right. And so get what you can afford. Now, Hans and I did say early on, and I harped on it, if this scope isn't going to do what you need to do, if you're wanting to shoot that longer range, then it's probably not for you. 
But if you're going to do a lot of shooting under 100 yards, 125, this is an awesome scope, and I don't think you're going to beat it for yeah, the money. I agree. So if you're looking to purchase the Bearing Optics Hawkster 25mm, the Hawkster R 25mm, you can call Jason at 877-350-1818. You can talk to Michaela, the office manager. If you got some questions about it, uh, you want to purchase it, give them a call, 877-350-1818. You can also hop onto the website, OutdoorLegacyGear.com. You can buy all the scopes, night vision or thermal, right there on the website. Uh, if you're I, watching on YouTube... I, I, oh, you I was going to interrupt you real quick. So. Yeah. Just real quick, anybody watching this, this is obviously, you know, October of 2020. And I'm going to tell you something. We've got a lot of things going on this year. We've got the coronavirus that has, has you know, messed with manufacturing, not just in the hunting industry, but all across the, the all the industries. Um, we've got an election year going on. Plus, we're getting cool weather. We're rolling into hunting season mm, uh, right. down south and up north. You I have guys that every week go, well, I went on your website. I watched your review, and the scope's not in stock. That's mm. right. That's because mm. just about all this stuff is sold as soon as we get it. So if you go to the website and you go, oh, man, you don't have it, whatever, call us. Check on it. It may be number one. We may already know when the next shipment's coming in. We may know that it's not long. Uh, I had a guy call today about a scope, and he goes, well, I see you're out of stock. We're like, no, we actually just have one, and it didn't get marked in stock. It's sitting in the warehouse, you know, and he was like, great, snatched it up. So with that said, uh, if you go to the website and it looks like everything's out of stock, well, it may be, but we're just in that time of year, and it's a crazy year. But but give us a call and, and let us talk to you and see if we still can't yeah. get you something because the wait may not be that long depending on what you're waiting for. Just yeah, wanted to throw good. that out. Very good point. If you are watching on YouTube, thank you very much. Thank you for listening to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify. Um, if you've been watching this video and you're asking yourself why is – Hans keep tugging on the sleeves of his shirt. I'm about 97% sure that I grabbed my wife's outdoor legacy gear t-shirt off the dresser and my arms are not naturally this buff is all I've got to say. Um, so oh, you're killing me. So I've, I've been tugging on my sleeves because mm. this shirt is about to cut off all circulation from my waist up right now. Welcome so to the gun 97%, show. 97.5% sure this is why my wife's outdoor legacy gear shirt. We've all got them. We've all got many of these type of shirts, and uh, they get mixed in the laundry. So I will try not to make it happen again. But my, my, my arms are not naturally... Uh, that this is muscular hilarious. Looking. <laughs> that is awesome. Happy uh, birthday to you, Jason. I know this is a dream come true for you to see me in oh a ladies' man. t-shirt. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, I'm. I can't wait. That's that's exciting. Yeah. So oh, if you're man. listening well, on listen. iTunes, go check oh, it go out ahead. on, uh, on uh, YouTube. So yeah. And that. I was just gonna say, if you're looking for Hans's stuff, you can find him. Uh, he's always hanging out over at Instagram, posting pictures of dead hogs and dead coyotes and videos. And if that offends you, then don't go over there because <laughs> that is all that he's going to be doing. It. Uh, it's going to be a lot of, of dead predators and, and dead hogs and pasture poodles. So go check that out. And uh, also, you can always find him. The place that he is best known for, YouTube. Just search for H-A-N-S-E-T-X. That's Hans East Texas. And you will find his channel when you get there. Like, subscribe. Not only will you see lots of great hunting video, you'll also see a lot of almost all the optics that we mm -hmm. review here on the show. Later on, he will do a review on his channel, and he'll show uh, footage from the field uh, whenever that's applicable. If it's something like this that he can get footage out of, he will. He'll show that on there as well as doing more of an in-depth walk around with the scope, talk about it some more. So uh, it's kind of a different review than we do here. So if you're looking for something like that, go check out Hans East Texas on YouTube. And you can, again, also find him on Instagram. Folks, we appreciate y'all coming back here every week and listening to Hans and I babble and ramble on. We hope that you get a little bit of either enjoyment, laughter, or uh, maybe even a little bit of education, which I can't imagine that we could educate anybody, but uh, we, we try to help you any way that we can. So hope you found this show enjoyable and come back next week because we're going to have more great reviews. Uh, as we keep saying every week, it's going to be reviews, reviews, <laughs> reviews. Those are That's normally right. not this time of year, but this fall, there is so much stuff coming out. 
that that's all it's going to be for our loyal listeners who are like, man, I'm not looking to buy anything. I'm tired of it. Uh, folks, we love you. Keep listening. And, and when, when all this is over, you'll be begging for some reviews for you'll be, you'll be tired <laughs> of hearing us babble about other stuff. So yeah. anyway, between now and then y'all stay safe in the fields and keep making those bacon pancakes. Thank you.